Finding a job in this market is very difficult and sometimes outright grueling. And not just for software engineers either. The probability of you getting a call back is pretty low by default, especially if you're not the company's ideal candidate. However, there are a few things that you need to be doing to improve your odds. Today's video is sponsored by Notion, which just so happens to be the perfect platform for streamlining your job search. Let's jump right in. First off, you need to up your resume game. Your resume is literally your first line of defense against ending up here. But there's a huge chance your resume won't even get seen. If you've been searching for a job long enough, you've definitely heard of ATS. But for those of you who haven't, ATS stands for Applicant Tracking System. It's basically software that recruiters use to sort through the thousands of applications that they get every day. And most ATS systems give recruiters the ability to sort and filter through their candidates based on whatever criteria they deem important. So now, instead of reading through a randomized stack of resumes, recruiters can actually sort it such that their top applicants appear within the first 50 to 100 resumes they look through. Your goal should always be to rank as high as possible and that's basically what's going to increase your odds in getting an interview now notion today's sponsor can actually help you format and rewrite your resume such that you rank higher in these systems i honestly love notion because it has this really intuitive interface that helps you organize your skills your experiences and your qualifications in a way that's tailored specifically to the job that you're applying to. In fact, with Notion's AI, rewriting your resume's bullet points to better match the job you're applying for literally takes a few seconds. And this is crucial because sometimes all it takes is one typo to get disqualified. Don't let that be you. I remember when I was searching for my very first job, I sent out hundreds of applications. So many that I couldn't even remember what positions I had applied to and when. I literally got a call from a startup curious about my resume and I was sweating bullets trying to remember what job this even was. And the last thing a recruiter wants to hear when they call you is, what job was this for again? You absolutely need to be tracking your job applications, your follow-ups, and your interview schedules. And this is what's gonna ensure that you're never caught off guard. With Notion, you can actually do all of that in one place. It's literally the perfect tool to keep your job search organized and efficient. Check this out. I'm not currently searching for a job, but if I was, here's how I would organize my search. What you're seeing here is actually Notion's job hunting dashboard template, complete with resources to help you find companies to apply to, email templates, and tables to keep track of your applications and contacts at each company. Also, you need to learn how to network properly. Networking is likely the most crucial parameter of anyone's job search. Sometimes it's not what you know, but who you know. In fact, I got my first and second job by networking. I met a VP of engineering at some random networking event back in 2020. After introducing myself and expressing interest in working at his company, we exchanged emails and the next thing I knew, I was in touch with a recruiter. Just by introducing myself, I managed to skip the hassle of competing with hundreds of other resumes. Now, in your job search dashboard, I highly recommend keeping track of important contacts that you meet and events that you intend to go to. It can also be pretty daunting to just cold email strangers. However, I like to use Notion to actually draft my emails before I send them. In fact, here's an example of an email template that I actually created using Notion's AI. Notice how in that email, I didn't outright ask for a referral. That's not even something you really wanna do right out of the gate. If you think about it, how can someone vouch for you if they don't actually know who you are? My email is designed to get me in front of a human being face to face which is where I can then develop a relationship that will be useful to me later. If you're a student now, then you should be networking now. And if you're actively searching for a job right now, then the people who already exist in your network are probably gonna be your best bet. One other thing is that standing out from the crowd is a must. With thousands of other people competing for the same jobs that you are, you need to do something that's going to catch the eyes of a recruiter. And having a developer portfolio is one of the best ways to do that. Because Notion allows you to publish pages, you can actually use it to publish a portfolio showcasing your project and skills. I would actually highly recommend using this template because it's not super flashy, but it'll get the job done. And you can use the time that you saved on not manually building a portfolio on building the actual projects that are going in your portfolio. The biggest hurdle I notice when it comes to building a portfolio though, is that people tend to get hung up on what they should build. For this, I would usually try to build something that's technically impressive, like a data visualizer or something that has real world application. 
like an e-commerce clone. Projects within those two categories are way more likely to catch the eyes of a recruiter, especially technical recruiters, because it's basically hard evidence that you can do the job. But if you have the skill, building an actual well-documented tool or contributing to open source is usually what you want to do. I would actually strongly recommend watching this video. And remember, practice makes perfect. It's one thing to get an interview and an entirely different beast to do well in one. The worst feeling is finally getting an interview after 200 rejections and fumbling at that last step because you spent most of your time applying to jobs instead of preparing for those interviews. And the best way to avoid this is to stay ready so you don't have to get ready. This. It's snowing outside. I shouldn't be surprised because I live in New York and it's basically winter, but damn. Hold on, hold on. Look at this. Yeah, outside is banned. It's fully, fully banned. But we're, we're, we're done with outside now. No more of that. Not until, not until summer. Anyway, I would recommend a minimum of two lead code questions a day and one hacker rank question. And ideally, you'd want to keep track of these questions and plan ahead so that you don't waste time trying to find questions to solve while you should be solving them. And of course, some angel named not even gonna try to pronounce that because I'm gonna mess it up, made the perfect template for doing this, which you can copy and customize as you see fit, then pre-populate it with carefully chosen questions that will help you practice concepts you need more exposure to. And this is, this is the cool part, hang in there. You can actually use Notion's AI to help you solve and understand the problems that you get stuck on. Like literally, look at this, look at this. This is the coolest. I can't curse, but I want to. You know what word I'm gonna use. This is the coolest thing I have ever seen. Not really, but it's still really cool. <laughs> also, if you're not PDACing your problems, you will fumble every interview no matter how technically adept you are. Remember when you didn't get full marks on your math test because you didn't show your work? Yeah, this is that, but on steroids. If you don't know what PDAC means, which you probably don't, I think this is some obscure thing from some bootcamp named Launch School. PDAC stands for P, process the problem. You need to be able to verbally confirm your understanding of the problem, especially in an interview setting. E stands for examples. Validate your understanding of the problem by creating examples and test cases, much like the ones you see in LeetCode or HackerRank. D stands for data structures. You should be able to identify in advance what data structures will be necessary in order to solve the problem. A stands for algorithm. This is the part where you develop a step-by-step -step solution to a problem in either plain English or pseudocode. C stands for code. Here is where you finally implement your algorithm in code. And this step should be the easiest if all the previous steps are followed. Think about it like this. If you've ever been to a dentist, they'll usually give you a verbal walkthrough of the entire procedure as they're performing it. And this is exactly how you wanna walk your interviewer through the problem. Each of your PDAC steps, you want them to be following along with you. Do this and you're usually golden because you're literally opening up a window into what's going on in your brain. And then they have an understanding of how you think, they understand whether or not they can actually work with you. And for behavioral interviews, you really only need to prepare for one question. This question gets asked on every interview and it pisses me off because it's incredibly lazy and not even really a question grammatically, but your answer almost always makes or breaks your candidacy. Tell me about yourself. I have seen too many people fumble over this one question when in truth, it actually should be the easiest. In fact, it's even easier to answer once you interpret the question as tell me about your journey into tech and what you've been working on. I actually strongly recommend drafting your response to this question. You can do it in Notion and tweak it until it's something that you can reasonably memorize and regurgitate without simplifying or accidentally abridging it during an interview. Also, you can actually use Notion's AI to help you write this. Just make sure you paraphrase and refactor it such that it is in your own words. Because that's better. You want to have a voice, you know? You want it to have your voice. The last tip I'll leave you with is this. Know thy enemy. You should be doing a reasonable amount of research into the companies that you're applying to in the event that you get an interview. Doing this will actually make it really easy to answer more lazy questions like, 
Why do you want to work here? If you know the company's values or their mission statement or even something niche like the technology used in the product itself, then it becomes pretty easy to call upon these details and explain why they align with your interests. People also seem to forget one other thing. As much as the company's interviewing you, you're interviewing them. Now, if you've done your research, you'll likely have prepared questions to ask your interviewer, specifically questions that'll help you determine whether or not the company will even be a right fit for you. When the interviewer asks, do you have any questions for me? Your answer should never be no. Always ask something. It shows that you're actually present and interested, especially if your question is meaningful. So that's it. With Notion, you can create a comprehensive game plan to land that offer. The job search right now is really tough, but with the right tools and strategies, you can definitely make it work. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you won't miss out on my next video. And remember, no matter how many times you lose, you only need to win once. My name is Devante, and this has been a dose of Devi. That was me drawing the Mickey Mouse ears. You know, like on Disney Channel? <laughs>